Praise the Lord, Bethel. Come on, put your hands together. One for the Father. One for the Son. One for the Holy Ghost. Three in one. Amen. You may be seated. Giving honor to God who's the head of my life. I bring you greetings from RH Ministry, the place where people are being blessed by God, where people have hope, and where families are here. And I thank God for this blood ball moment where I can come back home. I give honor to my bishop in his absence, to his son, Roderick III. I thank God for him, and I just bless God for what he's doing because he is faithful. Amen? And I thank God for his faithfulness. I thank God for this opportunity in RH ministry. And the Lord has given me a word for this house. And before I do that, I just want to thank God for my wife. I honor my wife, my prayer partner, my best friend, and tomorrow's her birthday. And pray for me because I'm a man of surprises. You know, I waited a long time and I said, Lord, whenever you bless me, uh, I'm going to treat her right. And I'm trying my best to be faithful to the promise of the Lord. I thank you, Pastor Beth Sherrod. I'll never forget when I first came to RH Ministry, we were standing in the street there. And you said, now the Lord's going to bless you with a wife. God is not only accurate, but he's faithful. Amen. I serve a God that will meet your needs. And I'm so glad that he is meeting all of my needs. Those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to Zechariah 2. Zechariah 2. Now, we were singing and clapping our hands. Everybody was saying they can't stop. Praising the Lord. I wonder if you're going to maintain that. I'm going to hold you to that. Just like I can preach and drink water, you can listen, get blessed, and worship God at the same time. Amen? So those of you who have your Bibles, rest on your feet as we go to Zechariah. I'm coming from King James Version, Zechariah 2, starting at the first verse. And the word of the Lord reads, I lift up my eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. And then he said, where go you? And he said to me, I measure Jerusalem to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. Third verse. And behold, the angel that talk with me, went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. And he said, and he said to him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as this town without walls, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I say, the Lord will be her walls of fire round about and be the glory in the midst of her. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Father, we thank you. I pray that I sit so you will stand up and speak through me. Lord, I pray right now as I plug in you, oh God, that you would have your way. Lord, there is a word for the house today. I pray that the people will take it home. And Lord, understand, Lord God, their strength comes from your word. I pray you would bring back everything to our memory, Lord. That, Lord, many times in services, folk get excited and get a sugar high, but go back and life is still the same. But in the name of Jesus, I pray against any strongholds, Lord, that might try to come to intimidate us. But, Lord God, we will use this word as a tool and fight this week and turn it into a weapon 
that we will prosper in the name of Jesus. This I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We see in the word of the Lord here, Zechariah. Zechariah is a prophet, a man of God. Actually, him and Haggai, they, they started revival. And the revival was they were in exile. They were in a situation of slavery in bondage. But God called Zechariah to encourage Israel, we must rebuild the temple. We must rebuild Jerusalem. And in this day and time, we have to understand the interpretation of the word in our text as he had the permission by God to encourage people. Let me tell you, not everybody can encourage you. I've been in church long enough to realize there are some people that will come to zap your joy. But I'm here to let you know, don't let nobody steal your joy. I'm here to let you know where I strive from is by the word of God. How I pray, it comes from the word of God. I thank God for his word. The word of God was taught in this church. And it rebuilt my soul. That's why I thank God for our bishop. He was a man that really blessed my heart. I was born and raised in this church. I remember this church before I went to kidney garden. I used to be in Myrtle Woods class right underneath the staircase way back then, back in the day. And never did I imagine I would be here today. But let me tell you, once you get to know who Jesus is, you become a dangerous person for the kingdom of God. I thank God because now I have a relationship with the Lord. I was born and raised in the church, but I didn't know Jesus. Like half of the folks are sitting down here. Some people come to church like it's a place of tag, a place to say, hey, I'm here, pastor. I'm here, bishop. I'm here. But you know what? The house of God is where I get all my vitamins so when I go out, I can fight with authority. So when I'm around people that don't know Jesus, I don't even have to say, say anything. But the power of God is on my life that folk know who I belong to. Case in point, I'll never forget the Lord blessed me with a job that I, I work for legal aid, Nassau County. I work for the courts. I work for pretty much all the courts, district court, county court, drug court, mental health court, diversion court. And the Lord has blessed me that after all these years, the judges respect my name because I transport people. I do discharge planning and I literally take people out of jail and put them in my car and take them to a drug program. I've met people from all walks of life, been in many situations, but one particular situation where the Lord ministered to me, uh, I, was, I had this call, Dave, you got to take so-and-so out of jail and take him to a program. So I took this man, never seen him in my life before, never witnessed to him, and we're walking out of the jail, and I, he's walking to my car, all of a sudden the man starts crying. And I said, yo, man, what, what's up? What's wrong with you? I need to take you to the hospital. He got in my car weeping. I said, hey, what's going on? He said, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> I said, whoa, call me off guard. And I'm a believer. I said, well, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And the Lord gave me an opportunity to witness to this man. He was an older man than me, a New York City fireman that had a, a, a problem with drinking. But I'm so glad that God can do a drive-by when you least think. In our text today, Zechariah, he looked up and saw the angel of the Lord. And you know what, let me tell you. How God chooses to come by, it's on him. But we have to learn to be sensitive enough to know when God is speaking, when God is showing up, when God is demonstrating and showing us himself. So we see in the word of the Lord, 
that the prophet says he lift up his eyes and behold a man measuring a man with a measuring line in his hand. Now, when I saw that and started reading and meditating, immediately I knew that God is up to something good. A measuring line. See, the Lord allowed the prophet to see a measuring line to get ready to hear from God, get ready to know that God is able to do the supernatural. And he had the goal to ask the angel, where are you going? The angel spoke back to him. He said, to measure Jerusalem. In my meditation of the scripture, Jerusalem remind me of Bethel. Bethel is a place that has a legend. In the throne room and on earth where folks worship God. Oh, it's quiet in here. Am I in Bethel? Am I in Jerusalem? I'll never forget. I'll give you an example. I had an aunt. She passed away. She came with us. Back in the day, I was a little boy. She was sitting all the way in the back. My aunt was one of them diehard, cross your heart, hope to die Catholics. She came in here. And the power of God was moving like it was earlier. Do you all recognize the power of God was walking and touching and healing? I had to grab tissue because I'm a crybaby because I love the Lord and I'm a person that gets intimate. And, and you know, I, I'll cry in a heartbeat when I know the presence of the Lord is here and I'm recognizing him. I might not jump up and down at the blood ball moment, but I'm still worshiping God. I'm worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So when my aunt was in the church and the power of God was moving, uh, my aunt started to lift her Catholic hands, the same hands that used to squeeze the rosary beads. That woman started to praise God and start saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Catholics, they don't do that. That's why I tease my wife. She used to be a Catholic uh, person. I call her my little Catholic girl. But when those can understand the glory of God, the presence of God, they are known to start changing. My aunt started worshiping God. And you know what? Let me tell you, no matter how you try to restrain yourself when God does a drive-by, when God moves, uh, you got to give him what he's owed. That is praise. Little side note, my aunt lived to be 105. Stopped bowling at the age of 10. I mean, at 100. Went to her caretaker's funeral. It pays to praise the Lord. Y'all won't say nothing. Or maybe I'm talking to dead people already. But it pays, it pays to praise the Lord. I don't know about you. I am a worshiper, and I love to praise God. I love to bless his name. I love to bask in his presence. You don't have to get emotional, but those that know the Lord and those that remember what God has done for you, you have reasons to open your mouth, to lift your hands, and give him praise. Zechariah, when he saw this angel, he was measuring Jerusalem. I can't measure how Bethel has impacted so many people's lives, so many churches. You know what cracked me up? I remember last year I saw a bishop, and you know, August, he usually takes his vacation. Even though he was on vacation, I'm walking into a restaurant with my wife, and we see Bishop ministering to another pastor while he's on vacation. So I, he really probably doesn't know the real meaning of vacation because he's a man that cares about souls. He cares about souls. I remember over 25 years ago, uh, Bishop saw me at a funeral, and 
It was when the time in my life I was in and out, and he said, Dave, I don't see you as much. And I was impressed. I said, as big as Bethel is, why he picked me? <laughs> he said, you having problems? I was ashamed. I, I looked down at my shoes, and I nodded my head, yes. Then I started coming back. Then I received the word. After I started receiving the word, I started sitting I first sat in the back. Then I noticed I was getting distracted by people walking by, so I started to sit up front. Then I came closer. I started carrying a bag and writing down notes and developing, knowing the art of the word of God, knowing that the word of the Lord is forever, that the Lord's word will renew me, that the Lord started rebuilding in me. Uh, I, I might have looked the same, but God was rebuilding me. And where he was rebuilding me, it was on the inside. You know, in our society, everybody want to rebuild the outside. But I serve a God that has a cure for your inside. And I bless God because he lives inside of me. I said he lives inside of me. I don't need you to validate how he lives. I know him for myself. And when I read the word, the word gives me all what I need to grow forward in life. We see in the word, the angel tells the prophet, Zechariah, he's going to measure. And in the third verse, he said, behold, the angel that was talking with him went forth. And then another angel came and met that angel. Now we're on the second angel. Then the second angel speaks. And Zachariah is just like how I would be, nosy. God got something to say. My ears go up like a German shepherd. <laughs> I, you know what? What you say is all well and good. But I don't know about you. I need to hear from God. I need these are some perilous times. We are in hot water in this country. We need the word of the Lord. We need the blood of Jesus. We need to hear from God. We see that the word of the Lord was coming through the second angel. Zechariah was listening. And Zechariah 2, 4, the angel of the Lord, the second one said to the first angel, run back to that young man and tell him the good news. Tell them that Jerusalem will be a place. Oh, glory to God. Jerusalem will be a place where there will be many men and there will be livestock, many livestock. And when the prophet heard that, that was his signal to encourage people. We must rebuild the temple. For if we rebuild the temple, we will rebuild Jerusalem. And you know what? I thank God because the Lord has blessed this place, which is Jerusalem. And the Lord has blessed from generation after generation, from Bishop Caesar Sr. to Bishop Caesar Jr. And now we have Roderick in the place where God has called him to. And I have a word for this house. This house is going to be impacted by many people according to the word of God that we must not faint. We must learn how to be faithful all over again. We are in a day and time where folk don't know what faithfulness is. I was sharing with Pastor Sherrod about the faithfulness of people, you know, but it comes from God. We got people that don't know how to be faithful um, in marriage. They don't know how to be faithful in church. They don't even know how to be faithful in business. They just don't know how to be faithful anymore. But I'm here to let you know, those that receive from God, those that learn how to pull from the Lord, will get the gift of faithfulness. And let me tell you, faithfulness prays, plays. Faithfulness plays. It pays. It pays. If you're faithful to the Lord, he will bless you. 
beyond your dream measure. I can't measure the goodness of the Lord. Measure, measure. God has been so good to me. That's why I learned the secrets is prayer and reading your Bible. We need to learn to pray, read our Bibles, turn on our plate, seek God's face, seek him like never before. Seek him as if it's your last day. Seek him as if it's your last day. The reason why the meaning of the word or the name Zechariah means Yahweh remembers. And I'm here to uh, remind you that God remembers all the small details of your life. Every little area of your life, God remembers. Uh, somebody needs to hear that. Some of you have been praying for years. Ten years went by, you didn't see the answer. Twenty years went by, 30, 40, 50 years went by. I'm here to encourage you. I serve a God that answers prayer. I serve a God that remembers. I serve a God that never forgets. God has a timing for the work that he's going to do in this house. God has a timing for the work he's going to do in your life. You have to understand even your worship is value. Even though we might worship God together and it sounds like joyful noise and it sounds like folk being emotionally charged. But I'm here to let you know that God takes note on every worshiper. God takes note on every person that waves their hand. God takes note on every person that says, Lord, I'm trusting in you. I'm believing in you. Lord God, have your way. Lord God, I'm going to keep crying out. There's things I'm asking God for. I didn't see yet, but I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I had parents that used to pray for me. And when I went to Westbury, Lord bless me. When I came back to the Lord, I came to Bethel. And I really got a full dose of the Holy Spirit at the altar. I think maybe the first time it was over here. Around this time here. And now I was praying and I just felt the presence of the Lord. And the Lord just had his way. And then... For maybe two months straight, I would come just to that spot. Then after a while, when I came here, I find somebody be in that spot, and I said, "Oh man, that's my spot." <laughs> so then I got over here. I met God more over here than I did over there. The presence of the Lord is in this place. It's for those that want it. I'm gonna say that again. It's for those that want it. You know, we got believers that are five percenters. They only believe five percent. They, they, they run out of what God has for them. By the time they hit the door, they enter the 95 percent. And they're not living the life that they ought to live. And they have the nerve to say, what happened? You know what? You need to come to the altar and start your works all over again. In 1 Zechariah 1, the third verse, the Lord spoke to Zechariah and said, Because of your fathers, they have turned away from me. And what you need to do is turn to me, and I will turn to you. And when I read that, I said, God wants to get intimate with his body. And we're the body of Christ. We're the temple of God because I got a hot flash. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his people. He's coming back. I said, Jesus Christ is coming back, but we must turn to him. Mm. We need to start practicing. Just have a prayer to say, Lord, I'm turning to you. Lord God, I'm laying everything aside, everything that's easily besetting me. Lord God, I'm turning to you. I'm coming to you, Lord Jesus. I'm coming to you just the way I am. Lord, I am turning to you. God is looking for people who have heard him say, about faith. 
about face, about my face. My wife had this prayer, Lord, I want to seek your face, not your hand. People always look at God as gimme, gimme, Jimmy. Give me this, Lord God, I need this. Lord God, I need this. Boy, it's more prayers about what you need. You act like God don't know you. You act like God don't care. He cares. He knows you before you even come to him. But we must learn to say, Lord God, teach me how to pray. Lord God, you had this preacher talking about Zachariah seeing an angel. Lord God, send me an angel. Oh God, give me a revelation of yourself. Lord God, I really want to have reason to get intimate with you. Lord God, help me. Lord God, come to me just the way that I am. Lord, I'm not going to let go until, Lord, you speak to me. Lord God, I need therapy. Lord God, my faith is weak, Lord God. Lord God, I'm being pulled, Lord, side by side. But today, I'm going to trust you. Today, I'm going to pull from you. I want to see even practice when you praise God, pull from the presence of God. Pull from the scriptures. Come from the heart and have a mind of the word of God so you can be prosperous. My job. My job, I have to be prayed up because I have to deal with people with all kinds of spirits. All kinds of spirits. We read in the word of God about the angels. How many people know that God has angels assigned to us? I'll never forget one time I was doing the transport. I was transporting two people. At one time, I was going to Randall's Island from Nassau County. And one guy was sitting next to me, shotgun. Another guy was sitting behind me. And by the time I drove by the Grand Central Parkway, by LaGuardia Airport, all of a sudden the Lord gave me a vision. The vision was the guy behind me stabbed me here with a knife and just went like this. And I'm here driving, bleeding out. And the dream or the vision was so vivid to I was frightened. So I'm driving. I couldn't let them know I'm, I'm scared. God didn't show them, but he showed me. And I'm saying it to myself, oh, Jesus. I'm really calling on the name of the Lord. I'm driving, being conscious, but yet saying, God, what was that all about? Long story short, we get to Randall's Island. I tell the guys, okay, guys, get your stuff. We're going to the program. We going, we went in the building, went up on the 11th floor. The gentleman that was behind me, sitting in the rear of the car, he kept going, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. I'm thinking, oh, what God showed me. To the point I was just in that zone, saying, God, what is that? What's that all about? And the guy kept yelling until he nudged me and said, Mr. Anderson. I looked at him, I said, what? He hands me the knife. I want to worship God so hard. Coming out that elevator, I was like, oh, God, you're so, you're so awesome. God, you allow me to know what was on his mind. I don't know if he was going to do it, and there was another angel there strong enough to hold his hand back. But as he gave me that knife, he said, I don't want to get in trouble. My question to you, he came straight from jail. Where did that knife come from? I didn't have one in my car. I always check my car after every transport. I have it professionally cleaned every time. I serve a God. That takes care of me. I want to introduce you to the same God who's taking care of you. Y'all won't say nothing in here. Y'all need to give God praise. I said you need to openly give God praise. 
not for my story, but let me tell you something. God has protected you, and my father taught me this, through seen and unseen. I serve a God that we need to worship him of the things that we didn't even see. The angel of the Lord came down and said, I got that. I got that. I'm your protector. I'm your provider. I'm your way maker. Oh, you're not giving him praise. I thought I was in Jerusalem. The city of praise. The city where David danced till his evening fell off. People of Jerusalem need to learn how to give God praise for what God has done, what God is doing, for what God is going to do. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would praise the Lord. Said Zachariah means God remembers. Now, some of y'all standing up because you remember what God has done for you. Some of y'all have your own life stories. When God did a drive by, it could be sickness. God is a miracle working God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks. Can we give them thanks? Can we give them thanks? I'm not talking to the cute folk, but those who love the Lord, those who are pushing up to God with your worship because it comes from your heart. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Bethel, you have been under teaching of faith. Why can't the same angel that visit Zechariah speak to you? Or maybe he spoke to you and you don't even believe the angel that the Lord sent. I'm so glad that God has his own usher boy. That's what those angels were. His own usher boy. And Zechariah listened to them. Not only that, did he listen to them, he told the people because where Zechariah was in that day and time, it was 70 years of people coming out of exile where they started to build, but then they stopped. And some of us start in the Lord, but then we stop. We started to praise him, then we stopped. We started to have faith and because God didn't meet us on our time schedule, we stopped believing. But I'm here to give you a booster shot from the throne room filled with the word of God that whatever the Lord has promised you, oh, can you grab it? Whatever God has granted you, it shall come to pass. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. What's yours? God's got it. And that's why I'm praising God for everything that he has done for me. I'm believing God for my children. I'm believing God for my grandchildren. For me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to close now. This text is all about rebuilding the temple. The vision of our bishop is rebuilding the temple. The bishop of our pastor Rod is to rebuild the temple. Because when the temple rebuilt, we become an unstoppable force that no man can stop us. The problem is with the bride, you're looking at yourself like a girlfriend. Jesus Christ is coming for the bride who's committed to him. 
The Lord wants folks that will turn to him in a commitment. Folk folk don't want to be committed anymore. But God has a way of proving himself faithful. See, the mentality of that day and time, people came from exile. They came from slavery. They took the habits of the world. And they weren't believing what God said anymore. We're in a day and time where the church has lost her strength. But guess what? Revival starts today. (laughs) Revival starts right now. I'm going to live this because I know he lives with inside me. I know that his word is accurate. I know that his word is what I stand on. His word is forever. His word is eternal. And I will worship him just because of his word. I love the Lord and I will worship him. If you notice in Zechariah 2, the first angel, when he had the measuring line, he measured with as the Old Test, as the um, King James Version said, the brief, that's the width, and the length. Immediately, the Lord gave me the revelation. He's talking about the cross. He was saying, there's going to be someone coming that's going to die on that cross for all mankind to cause redemption to cause you to have the right to say, God, forgive me from my sins. See, from the cross is where the blood was shed. And it broke every curse, every generational curse. That's why I I honestly believe in coming against whatever my granddaddy's daddy, daddy did. The blood has covered it. And I'm walking in the blood. I'm walking in the blood so much when I read the word, the blood affects me. I believe the blood. I believe the word of God. I believe that the Lord is speaking to me personally. I believe the Lord is using so many examples of what he is doing. Just Bethel itself, which is Jerusalem, that's being rebuilt. God is going to do a new thing in this house. Those of you who have been here long enough, every generation of leadership, God does a Rambo here. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Now we are looking with expectation, but how can you look if you're not praying? How can you look if you're not reading the word of God? How can you look if you're not fasting, crying out to God, have your way? You won't even see it when it comes. God is looking for a bride in preparation. I'm all man, but I'm still the bride of Christ. I'm looking for it for the king is coming. When I was a little boy, Bishop Caesar Sr. used to teach us about Jesus is coming. I'm 62 years old and counting. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The angel showed us the sign with the length and the width. The length means he will reach you no matter where you are. I'm so glad because I was a man full of habits. I was insecure. I used to do cocaine, but the Lord delivered me from coke. The Lord delivered me from alcohol. The Lord delivered me from weed. Because of the cross, he reached me. He used Bishop Caesar to constantly preach that I started coming on Sunday mornings. I started coming at Sunday evenings. I started coming on Thursday. And it paid off because I start to understand the reaching from the cross. And because he reached me, I live a lifestyle now where I say, Lord God, wash me. Constantly wash me. Wash me, Lord God. We're in a day and time where folks live a dirty life. But they might call me an old man. But because of the blood, I'm not a dirty man. I'm not a dirty old man. 
I'm washed in the blood. I'm washed in the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. I wonder if there's some blood carrying believers in here that can hollow. Can I hear the blood? Can I hear the blood? I'm not talking about the gang. Oh yeah, we are a gang. But can I hear the blood? The blood of Jesus. Because of the blood, we shall live forever and ever and ever. That's why I'm taking care of this body right now. Because in my, I believe I'm middle age. Because the best is yet to come. I want to be here with Pastor Rob when they have to push the walls out. I want to be here when the place is packed out. Because God is going to rebuild people. When, when we had the problem with um, uh, um, the storm with Sandy, I'll never forget, I had a storm in my life. The church was wiped out. And today I saw some people who came to help us rebuild the temple in Red Hook. And you know who you are. And when I saw you, you remind me of God's goodness. The Lord was so grateful. My wife and I, we lost the whole church. People were relocated. The whole area was a black zone. We were the only ones that had electricity. But we kept on going forth in the Lord. We were staying faithful to God. We went upstairs and people would say, Pastor, when are we going to go back downstairs? When are we going to rebuild? And our bishop just got finished rebuilding the sanctuary. We had brand new carpet, everything. Two years later, Sandy came and took away everything. It hurt my heart to rip up that wet, soggy carpet. We have at least four feet of water in that sanctuary. And one day, I don't know, Pastor Sher Sherrod, you remember, I came to Bethel. You were there, and Bishop was there by the copy machine. Bishop said, Dave, we're going to rebuild again. Yeah. And he spoke that. Guess what happened? People from the West Coast called my wife and said, we've we never been to Red Hook before. But the Lord is telling us we need to come and help you. After Bethel came and we had to throw out everything, we had to rip the walls out. Everything, the whole place was mildewed. Reverend John Sherrod was there, came with a crew, and we just had to throw, we had to gut the whole thing out. Then these folk came from California and made a promise to us. They said, we'll help you. But what is your church? What's the mission of the church? My wife said, well, we have a pantry. He said, that's good enough. They said, we're not going to leave here till we rebuild the place. They rebuild the place. The people who came and painted the sanctuary they did Ronald Reagan's house. They came and left us with love offerings. I'll never forget that day Bishop said, we're going to rebuild again. He was like prophesying. I don't know if he knew or what. He said, they, churches are going to give you money. That's why when we had that dedication service, we had a good time because people from different denominations came and blessed R.H., so you are from a church that rebuild churches. You are from a church that rebuild people. You don't, you don't get this. I'm the product of being rebuilt. I'm pastoring a building that's being rebuilt. I have a heart for people that can't be rebuilt. I'm going to the jail tomorrow if the Lord's willing to get folk out to tell them that they can be rebuilt. I know a rebuilder. I know the chief contractor. 
of our soul and the word of the Lord renews our soul so we bless God and we thank him because of the legacy of this house of rebuilding 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 there's no excuse for anyone who comes to this house and you don't know the Lord something is wrong with you today in folding up because y'all don't like long preaching I don't either I just want to know if there's someone here you don't know the Lord I just want to pray for you that's why I'm going to meet you halfway I remember I used to come to this church with my weed in my pocket with my joints and when Bishop would walk the aisle I'd go oh no but now I'm walking the aisle saying, oh yeah, he can rebuild you. Amen. Is there somebody, maybe you, maybe you don't do drugs, maybe you don't drink, maybe, but you're doing something that displeased God. I, I just want to pray with you. Man, I'm everyday people that learns to repent. Is there somebody here to say, hey, preacher, pray for me. I want this Jesus. I, I need to be rebuilt. Is there somebody? Is there somebody? Can I see your hand? Can I pray for you? That's all I want to do is pray for you. Just, just, just where you are. God bless you. You got one hand. Is there another person honest? Is there another person who's honest that say, hey, 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 boy, hey, pray for me. I need, I need, you know, because people are so visual today. Even in the word, Zechariah described the angel of the Lord and what he had in his hand and how he was measured. I'm here to pray for you. Is there somebody else? Hallelujah. Come on, saints, pray. You know, some people feel embarrassed, but let me tell you, don't miss heaven. You got to get past yourself and get past the people that are around you because they won't get you into the presence of the Lord. You have to repent for yourself. You have to ask God, Lord God, forgive me. It's me standing in the need of prayer. Lord God, I pray right now that you forgive me. Make me whole. Make me whole again, Lord God. Is there somebody else? This is really dark. God bless you. There's another hand. This is directed to you. I believe there's more folk. It's that two men, real men, stood, put their hands up and say, yo, pray, pray for me. I'm not putting nobody down. But take a full package to put your hands up. And I'm not sticking no gun in front of your face. Oh, I see another hand. Three hands. Hallelujah. 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 I see four hands. Oh, glory to God. Oh. Hallelujah. It was just a simple word the Lord just gave me this year. Four men, if you can, just meet me. Just meet me up front. See, I'm meeting you halfway. Come on. Come on. Just, 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 just come on. Just come on up. Come, just come on up. Come on up. You put your hand up. Put your body where your hand is. Come on, bro. Come on. Just the way you are. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. That was my war cry. 
because I pray that these men will be warriors for the kingdom of God. May the Lord use you mightily. May the Lord heal you because he's the healer. Oh, Kaya. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? This is the proof of the men. The men. The men. We need to pray for our men. Our men. God will use mightily for revival. Mm. Today I'm just going to ask everyone just to repeat after me. We're going to get right with God. That's what it's, it's simple. We, we're going to be right. We're going to get right with God. And this something inside of you that you want to do to say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me. I believe God is able to do it. Man, woman, whoever you are, this is your time. I want you to repeat after me, everybody in the house. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, receive your word today. I receive your word today. This day, this day I repent. I ask, you I ask you to forgive me, to forgive me. from all my sins, sins. creating me, me a clean, a clean heart. I pray that the fire of God, fire of God will, be of me, will be inside of me, that I'll be your servant. I, be your servant. I, give you my all. I give you my all, and I pray this day, I pray this day as I submit my life to you, to you. I'm yours. You're my God forever and ever. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be consistent in reading the word and talk to you about your word. Help me to manage everything you give me. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I pray for every man that's here. I pray for every person that even didn't come up, but they spoke confession. I pray that their fruit will remain. I pray, Lord, that they would be challenged by your word and understand that they are part of the kingdom of God. God, let their fruit remain. And I pray that they have the gift of multiplying. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand. Each one of you all, you have an altar worker, and I guess you will go out that door and they will get information from them. Come on, let's give God praise. What a word, what a word. Look what the Lord has done.